Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to get started. Actually, it's 7 o'clock when it got, so we are going to get started. I ask that we grab our water bottles or anything that we feel we may need today here for our yoga session. May we find ourselves in a comfortable seated pose. I'm going to find myself in a cow face. May we find any seat that feels good for us. Relax in our bodies. Gazing downward towards the earth. Maybe we can close our eyes if that feels comfortable. Using the down gaze to relax and soothe. Allowing our shoulders to relax downward away from our ears. Our tummies are nice and tight. Spinal cord is nice and long. Our shoulders are back nice and straight. We are sitting tall. As we take nice, deep breaths, inhale through the mouth, hold the breath, Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Noticing how the exhale relaxes our bodies even more as we continue to gaze down becoming centered here today. Hanging out here for a couple breaths. Noticing how we feel within. Three more breaths. Noticing our bodies are becoming completely relaxed here. As we bring our palms together at heart center, seated prayer. Allowing our thumbs to touch our sternum. Continuing to gaze down, checking in with self. Noticing how we feel being aware of what is going on within, without judgment, simply noticing. Hang out here for three more breaths. One more breath. Exhale, palms above the head, seated salute. Spinal cord is nice and long as our arms reach up towards the ceiling, filling our spinal cord, stretching here. Tummies are nice and tight, filling and stretching. Nice deep breath, inhale, arms reaches up towards the heavens. Exhale, seated twist, right side, twisting our bodies over, gazing over that right shoulder if that feels good. Or we can gaze forward, whatever feels good for us. We're going to hold this pose for four breaths, relaxing our spinal cord here. Two more breaths. Exhale back to center, palms in the air. Seated twist, opposite side, gazing over that shoulder or gazing forward. As we completely relax our bodies, Four more breaths. Two more breaths. Exhale back to center, palms in the air. As our palms touch, breathing back down a seated prayer. Relaxing the body, gazing down. 
Noticing how we feel. Two more breaths. Relaxing our palms beside our bodies on the side, touching the earth, noticing the vibrations and the energies from our environment, simply checking in. Natural breath. As we breathe our shoulders up towards our ears and rotate them towards the back, we're gonna do a couple of shoulder rolls, relaxing the upper parts of our bodies here. Tummies tight, gazing down or eyes closed. As we relax our minds and bodies. Two more breaths. As we find pause at center and rotate our shoulders in the opposite direction, rotating forward. Relax in the body. Nice, slow movements. We are taking time for self-care. We are not in a rush here. Two more breaths as we find pause. Breathing our palms back up above our heads. Salute. Exhale, prayer. Relaxing the body as we flow to our tabletop, coming to our hands and our knees. Ensuring that our knees are hip distance apart. Hanging out here, noticing how we feel. Gathering our balance as we drop down to our cow. Our chin comes slightly up, our back is sunken. Noticing how this feels on our spinal cord. As we rotate to our cat, chin comes towards our clavicle. Spinal cord comes up in the air nice and high. We're going to do a couple of cat cow rotations to our natural breath. Ensuring that we are keeping our tummies nice and tight. Three more breaths. One more breath. Pausing at our table, gathering our strength, noticing how we feel, checking in with body. If all feels well, we're going to come into a bird pose, lifting our right leg to the back nice and high. If we don't find balance, we can always lower our toes downward towards the earth and allow our toes to relax on the earth. Whatever feels good for us. Once again, ensuring our tummies are nice and tight. And I say engaging our abs throughout the session because if we engage our abs when we're working out, we will engage our abs normally throughout our daily lives, even when we're just walking and working. So we work on always keeping our abdominal muscles nice and tight. Noticing the difference between sucking in and keeping our abs tight. We're gonna hang out here for two more breaths. Gazing forward, finding our balance. If this feels good, we are going to bring our left arm forward, going deeper into the pose, holding this pose, four breaths. Two breaths. As we exhale, knee to elbow, bringing in that crunch, feeling that crunch here, working our abdominal muscles, hold the pose, two breaths. One breath, exhale back to bird. Coming back, knee to elbow, back to bird. Knee to elbow, holding it in. Three breaths, feeling that crunch right here. Exhale back to bird. As we flow to our table, dropping our bodies down to our cow, noticing how this pose relaxes our bodies. Breathing to our cat. Exhale, back to table, bird pose opposite side, left leg goes to the air, behind us nice and long, gathering our balance here. If we feel comfortable, we can bring our right arm forward, holding a pose, engaging our abdominal muscles, 
We're gonna hang out here for four natural breaths. Two more breaths, building balance, building strength. Exhale, knee to elbow, feeling the crunch. Back to bird. Knee to elbow. Back to bird. Knee to elbow. Holding it in. Three breaths. Two breaths. Exhale back knee. I'm sorry, bird pulls. <sighs> Relaxing in our table. Drop into our cow. As we exhale to our cat, coming into our thread the needle right side, bringing our right arm out towards the side, threading that right arm through our left as our heart chakra comes downward towards the earth, noticing how we feel. If this pose feel good, we can go deeper by wrapping our left arm around our backs here, hanging out here in this pose, Four natural breaths. Maybe we can gaze our eyes downward in this pose, simply filling one with our environment. Natural breaths. As we slowly unwrap that arm coming out the pose, Back into our table, drop into our cow, exhale to our cat. Coming back to our table, thread the needle opposite side, bringing that left arm out, threading it through the right as our heart chakra comes downward towards the earth, relaxing the body. Nice deep breath. We can go deeper by wrapping that right arm around our backs. Maybe we can close our eyes, taking nice natural breaths, getting lost in a moment. Four more breaths. One more breath. As we slowly unwrap that arm, pushing our bodies up, coming back to our table, dropping down to our cow. Exhale into our cat. As we push our bodies up to our first down dog, tummies tight, gazing back at our feet. Feeling a nice deep stretch here, hanging out here in down dog for a couple breaths. We are now working our upper bodies Maybe we can pedal our feet, walking our dogs, rotating our legs from side to side, using this pose to open up our hips, relax our hips here. Three more breaths. Finding our pause as we flow to three-legged dog, right side. Right leg goes in the air nice and high. <sighs> Lifting our leg as high as we can, noticing how it relaxes and strengthens our gluteus maximus on the right side. We're gonna hold this pose. We're gonna do a couple of pulses by lifting our legs slightly up, slightly back, doing a couple pulses, working our gluteus maximus here. <sighs> Finding pause as we bring our knee to our elbow. Feel the crunch. <sighs> Lift the leg back up in the air, three-legged dog. Knee to elbow. We feel our bodies getting nice and warm here. Back to three-legged dog. Gaze them back at their feet. One more time, knee to elbow, holding the pose, two breaths, building strength. Exhale, three-legged dog. Two breaths, one breath. Exhale down, down dog. Holding the pose as we pedal our feet, walking our dog. And we're gonna keep on moving forward here, continuing to build strength. 
Lifting our left leg up in the air, nice and high. Gazing back at our feet. Lifting that leg nice and high, working our gluteus maximus on the opposite side. Two breaths. Tummy's tight. Exhale, knee to elbow. <sighs> Exhale back, three-legged dog. Knee to elbow. Body's getting nice and warm. Three-legged dog. One more time, knee to elbow, hold in a pose, two breaths, building strength. Exhale, three-legged dog. As we flow to our down dog, gazing back at our feet, breathing forward to our up dog. Taking out here, three breaths. Exhale, back down dog. Now, sometimes in our down dogs, we or our client's arms get tired. We can always float down to our dolphin by coming down on our forearms. So may we all come down and relax here on our forearms and our dolphin. Dolphin pose is a nice option to give ourselves or our clients if they are unable to hang out in a down dog for, for a long time. So coming down to dolphin, it allows us or the clients to feel like they're still in the same pose as the rest of the class without causing so much harm or tiresome to their bodies. So hanging out here in Dolphin, you probably noticed that your forearms are getting nice and tired already. Dolphin pose prepares our minds and our bodies for headstand. This is a headstand prep pose. And if we was to walk our feet closer towards our body, you'll notice how you can feel it even more in your body. If we choose, two more breaths. As we drop to our knees, coming into a wide-legged child's pose. Relaxing our bodies, bringing our arms forward or back, whatever feels good for us. Nice deep breaths. <sighs> Chest comes towards the earth. Our torso relaxes between our thighs. As we hang out here in our child's pose, the seven natural breaths. Maybe we can close our eyes or gaze our eyes down if that feels good to us. Three more breaths. Maybe we can walk our fingers to the front of the yoga mat, feeling a stretch even more. As we rotate our bodies from side to side, noticing how it loosens up and relaxes our hips even more, simply rocking. If that feels good for us, Two more breaths. As we come to our hands and our knees, back to our table, but before we flow into our table, we're gonna do a couple of spinal waves, waving our bodies here. Noticing how the spinal wave relaxes and soothes our spinal cord. We're gonna do this for three more breaths. Moving our bodies nice and relaxing here. One more breath. As we flow to our table, dropping our bodies, we're gonna come into a hero's pose, allowing our buttocks to come towards our heels of our feet. We are in our hero's pose, if we're able. <sighs> Noticing how we feel here, hanging out here just for a couple breaths. <sighs> Gathering strength within our bodies. As we slowly come up to our knees, we're gonna prep for a camel pose. Coming on to our knees, placing our hands at the lower parts of our backs. Our fingertips are facing our spinal cord. So our fingertips are facing the center of our backs. As we lift our shoulders up 
and rotate our shoulders towards the back. We are using the shoulder rotations to relax and soothe our spinal cord. We are also warming up our spinal cord before we go into our camel. We're going to do three more rotations. As we find our pause, and if our body's still okay, we're going to keep our hands at the base of our backs, and we're going to slightly lean back just a little, noticing how this feels in our body, noticing if it causes any pain or discomfort. If we're able, we can allow our head to fall between our shoulder blades. Going even deeper into the pose if we're able. As we breathe back up, coming on our hands, I mean, coming onto our knees, just breathing up, noticing how this feels, relaxing the body. If we feel okay, if our body feels fine, we can take our right hand and place our right hand on the right heel of our foot. Just simply see how that feel as our body slightly fall to the back. Slightly fall to the back without causing any pain. We are in a half camel here. We can stay in our half camel and lift our opposite arm up in the air, nice and high, and lean slightly more back in that camel. We don't have to Relax our head between our shoulder blades if we don't choose. We can keep our neck up comfortable. If this pose feels good and we want to go deeper, we can now allow our head to relax between our shoulder blades and allow our hand to go even further over our head, feeling the back bend even more. Hanging out here for four breaths or any camel that we choose for four more breaths. Two more breaths. Exhaling up from that camel. Relaxing our bodies. Placing our hands on the base of our back and slightly bending back. Noticing how this relaxes our spinal cord. Maybe allowing our head to fall between our shoulder blades if that feels good for us. As we come out of that pose, back to our knees just relaxing, dropping down completely, coming to a child's pose. Relaxing and hanging out here, gazing our eyes downward. We're gonna hang out here for five natural breaths. Three more breaths. As we walk our fingers to the front of the yoga mat, feeling the stretch, moving our bodies from side to side, loosening up our hips even more. Finding our paws, bringing our buttocks to our heels, coming back to that hero's pose. Relaxing the body, coming back to our knees. We're gonna do half camel on the opposite side. Placing our hands at the lower base of our backs. Fingertips are facing the spinal cord. As we slightly, chest comes slightly up as our head falls slightly to the back. Only going down as comfortable as it feels for us. Two more breaths. Coming back up to our knees, relaxing the body, rotating our shoulders towards the back if that feels good. <sighs> Noticing how this feels. And if our body feels well, we're gonna take our left hand and place our left hand on our left heel. Our heart chakra comes slightly up as our back bends slightly towards the back. We can bring our right arm up in the air as we flow into our half camel. We're going to hang out here three breaths. If this half camel feels good, 
we can come deeper in this pose by allowing our head to fall deeper between our shoulder blades and allow our arm to go deeper above our head. Noticing how our back bends even deeper. Two more breaths. And at any time, if anybody wanna go into full camel, feel free to wrap your hand, your opposite hand all the way around and come into that full camel. We're gonna hang out here for four more breaths. Coming out of that camel, coming back down as we flow into our child's pose or our puppy pose. We're gonna hang out here for seven natural breaths. Three more breaths, relax in the body. As we walk our fingers to the front of the yoga mat, feeling that stretch even more. Our heart chakra comes towards the earth as our torso relaxes between our thighs. Eyes or gaze downward as we completely relax our bodies here. We're gonna hang out here three more breaths. And exhale into our table. As we cross our feet behind our bodies and find ourselves in our seated pose. Maybe bring our palms together at heart center. Maybe gaze down just for a second. Becoming more centered here today. Two more breaths. Shoulders relax downward away from the ears. Relaxing our hands on our legs or the floor, whatever feels good for us. As we gaze at our attendees here today, and see if there's anyone who would like to teach or if anyone have any questions or anything you would like to discuss today. Hi, we're not gonna go into the uh, mermaid or um, king pigeon yet, but if you guys have like a strap, like I have a stretchy strap here that I'm gonna use when I do it. Um, some people have the hoop straps. I see, okay, I see, yes, okay. So everyone has different types of straps. So whatever straps feels good for you. And again, there may be people who do not even need the strap. Um, the strap is going to be optional. So we're just gonna have that placed to the side for whenever we get into the pools, whenever we need it. So I ask that we, we are already in our seated position to bring our bodies back center here and get us back into the moments. I ask that we take a nice deep, breath in. Hold the breath for a couple seconds. Exhale through the mouth. Relaxing our shoulders down away from our ears. Tummies tight, spinal cord is nice and long. As we come to our tabletop, relaxing our bodies here. And our table, we're gonna cross our feet behind us and come back to a seated position because let's go into a locust pose. We're gonna relax here on our backs and our savasana only for a second, bringing our knees to our chest, hugging our knees into our chest. As we lift our legs up in the air, legs on the wall pose, and the invisible wall in our case, allowing our hands to push our legs outward towards the sides, feeling this stretch here. We are gonna open up our hips just a little because when we're in our mermaid, we wanna be able to just loosen up our hips just a little. 
using our hands to slightly push our legs apart without causing any pain. Two more breaths. Exhaling our legs back to legs on the wall. A lot of people also call this reclined staff pose. Relaxing the body, bringing our knees back into our chest. As our knees fall towards the left, recline spinal twist. Knees are towards the left, right arm comes out towards the side. Gazing over that right shoulder or gazing up towards the heavens, whatever feels good for you. We are using this pose here to relax and loosen up our spinal cord. Allowing our shoulder blades to relax backwards and to the earth. Eyes are gaze downward as we relax our bodies here today. Two more breaths. Exhaling back to center, knees to chest, hugging them in. Exhale, opposite side. Legs fall towards the right. Left arm comes out towards the side. We gaze over that left arm or gaze up towards the heavens. Allowing our shoulder blades to fall backwards towards our yoga mats as we completely relax our bodies here. We're gonna hang out here for four more breaths. Two more breaths. Exhale back to center, knees to chest, hugging them in, lifting our legs up in the air. As we connect our hands to the lower parts of our legs and bring our legs towards our torso, feeling a stretch. We can also feel it behind our hamstrings. Maybe we can slightly lift our body off the floor and connect our head towards our legs. Exhale back to legs on the wall as we allow our feet to come straight out. We are in our Savasana just for a second. We're gonna come into a full body stretch, allowing our arms to come above our head. Our feet are pointed in the opposite direction. What we are doing here is we are loosening up our bodies as much as we can, feeling a full body stretch. Fingertips going in one way, feet are pointed in the opposite direction. Three more breaths. Exhale to our Savasana, relaxing just for a second. As we roll on towards our side. Stacking our bodies here. Just hanging out here for a second and we're gonna work on a lizard. Our bodies are shaped like an L, nice and long. We have our arm up above our head. We have our other hand in front of us. We're gonna call this our kickstand hand. Our legs are stacked on top of each other. And we're gonna use this pose to help us find balance here today. Slightly lifting our leg up in the air just a little. Noticing how we are keeping our balance here. Tummies are nice and tight. And within seconds, we probably already feel the burn within our legs. So we are keeping our balance, but we are also working our lower bodies here. Two more breaths. As we exhale our leg back down, maybe allowing our head to relax on our arm. And if that feels good, we can go deeper in the pose by allowing our opposite hand to come up above our head and both our hands connect. As we relax here on his shoulder, Tummy's tight. We're in our alligator pose completely. Our arms are the alligator's tail and our legs are the alligator's mouth. And we're gonna slightly lift up the leg to open up the alligator's mouth to feed our alligator. We are feeding our bodies. We are building our balance here. Filling the burn. We're gonna hang out here for four more breaths. Two more breaths. 
We are shaping our legs here in this pose. We're gonna look good in our jeans. Bonus breaths, three more breaths. <sighs> One more breath. Exhale the leg down. Relax in the body as we flow on to our tummies. Relaxing on our tummy, we are in our Sphinx pose here. We are relaxing on our forearms in our Sphinx pose. Noticing how this feels in our spinal cord. This is a slight back bend. We're going to come slightly down and swim our hands to the backs of our bodies coming into our locus. This is also a back bend. Our feet are slightly up off the floor. Our hands are up off the floor and our chest is up off the floor. As we gaze forward, Natural breaths, locust pose. Two more breaths. Exhaling down, simply taking a rest just for a second. Maybe allowing our forehead to touch the earth as we gaze our eyes downward for a second. Exhaling back up to our locusts. Feeling that back bend here. And we're gonna come deeper into this pose and come into a bow pose by connecting our left hand towards our left foot, bringing it in. And if this feels good, if it feels good, we can go all the way and connect that right hand towards the right foot. So then lifting our bodies up off the earth, noticing how our spinal cord is bent even more. This pose here prepares us for our pigeon and our um, mermaid pose. Hanging out here, three more breaths. At any time, we can come back down to our locust or our sphinx pose. Three more breaths for those who are still in the pose. Exhale, relax in the body, coming into that sphinx pose, coming on our forearms. In our Sphinx pose, we want to ensure that our shoulders are not sunken. We want to be up nice and tall. See that there? How our shoulders are away from our ears. Noticing how this feels in our back. Gazing downward. Nice deep breath. Exhale. <clears throat> Palms are flat on the earth. As we use our palms to push our bodies up, we are in our seal. So coming from our Sphinx pose, we're going to push our bodies up with our hands, kind of like a seal on a rock in the water when they're looking over the ocean. So we are in our seal pose. Noticing how this pose helps the back relax even more. It's the back bend as well. We are doing a lot of back bends in this session to prepare us for mermaid and king pose. Coming back down to our Sphinx just for a second. Relax in the body. One breath. Exhale back up. Seal pose. Ten comes slightly up, gazing slightly up towards the sky. Two breaths. Exhale down. As we come onto our side, and we're going to do alligator on the opposite side. So whatever side we just did, we're gonna flip to the opposite. Our arm is up above our heads. Our body is long like an L. We have our kickstand hand in front of us, which is helping our body stay up. Our core, our tummies are nice and tight. As we lift the opposite leg up in the air, we can always relax our head on our arm if that feels good for us. Noticing the higher we feel it, I mean lifted, and the lower we lift it, we can feel it in different parts of our legs. So maybe do whatever feels good for us. Four more breaths. Exhale and lay down. We're gonna come deeper in this pose if we're able by allowing our opposite hand to come above our head, connecting our hands together, relaxing on that arm. If we find our balance, we can slightly lift up that leg. 
core, our tummies are nice and tight as we balance our bodies here for four natural breaths. Two more breaths. Fill in a burn in our legs. We can do it. Exhale, relax in the leg. Coming back onto our tummies as we relax in Sphinx pose. Nice breath as we come into a sleep pose. Coming down right here on our forearms and relax in here. Closing our eyes or gazing our eyes down as we catch our breath for a couple seconds. Two more breaths. Pushing our bodies up, we're gonna place our hands right next to our pecs, next to our chest, and push our bodies up to our cobra. We are here in our cobra, noticing how this is also bending our backs. Wanna make sure that our shoulders are away from our ears. Natural breaths. As we push our bodies up to our up dog, our thighs are off the earth in our up dog. Noticing the difference between an up dog and a cobra. They look very similar. In a cobra, our thighs are connected to our yoga mat. In an up dog, our thighs are off, are off the yoga mat. Natural breath. Exhale, down dog. As we gaze back at our feet, pedal on our feet from side to side. Mm, relax in the body. Walking up or jumping up to a complete forward fold. <sighs> Maybe we can come into a rag dial by grabbing our shoulders. I'm sorry, our elbows from side to side. Now coming into a half forward fold. <sighs> relax in the body. Exhale to our Tadasana. Our palms are at our side. We are in our Tadasana here. Noticing how we feel, catching our breath. We're gonna take our left foot and slightly lift it off the earth. Just slightly off the earth, building our balance here, noticing how we feel. <sighs> building balance. If this feels good, maybe slightly bring our knee off to the side, just a little. Yes, just a little, noticing how this feels. Seeing if we got our balance. Coming back to center. Noticing how this feels in our legs. If this feels good, we can actually try to come into a dancer's pose by reaching slightly towards the back and touching our foot with the back of our head. And if we don't have our balance, I ask that we come to a wall or a chair and hold and touch the wall or the chair as we come into our dancer's pose. And once we are touching something, if we don't find our balance, we want to lift that back leg up in the air as our chest, heart chakra comes downward towards the floor, kind of like a half forward fold. Relax in the body. Noticing how this feels. Now this pose here actually prepares us for King Pigeon. It's stretching our leg up towards our head. And again, holding on to the wall just is a nice option that we can give ourselves or our students if they don't have the balance to be in the pose completely. Two more breaths. Exhaling down. Relax in the body. Maybe cut on our feet, walking our feet from side to side. Relax in our hips. Bringing our palms at heart center as we exhale down to our chair pose. Noticing how this pose counter stretches what we just did. Exhale, complete forward fold. Half forward fold. Back to Tadasana, palms are at our side. As we now lift our right foot slightly up in the air, 
gathering our balance. We can step off the yoga mat if that feels good for us. If this feels okay, we can bring that right leg slightly out toward the side. Simply just checking in to see how we are with our balance as we bring it back forward. If we feel fine, now we can bring that leg towards the back. Connecting to the wall or anything we need to hold on to. And lifting our body as our leg comes behind our bodies and our dance is pose opposite side. And again, holding on to a wall or a chair will allow us to get into the pose and feel the stretch. A couple more breaths. So noticing how when we hold on to a wall, which here we can actually come deeper in that pose, lifting our leg up even higher, feeling a stretch. Two more breaths. Exhale, relaxing the leg. Bringing our palms at heart center. Coming down to our chair. Hanging out in our chair for a couple breaths. As we twist towards the right, chair pose twist. Exhale back to center. Chair pose twist opposite side. Exhale back to center. Complete forward fold. As we walk our hands to the front of our mats, we are in our down dog. <sighs> Gazing back at our feet as we pedal our feet, walking our dog. <sighs> Lifting our right leg in the air, three-legged dog. Maybe bending our right foot towards our left buttocks, opening up that hip just a little bit more. Two breaths. If this feels good and you want to go deeper, we can fall into that wild thing. Feeling that stretch even more, building strength in that left arm. Two breaths, feeling a stretch. Exhale, coming out of that pose back into our down dog. Gazing at our feet as we pedal. Our feet walking that dog. Three-legged dog, opposite side, left legs in the air, nice and high. Gazing back at that foot. Bending our leg, allowing our left foot to come towards our right buttocks, opening up the hip. Two breaths. We can flow deeper, coming into that wild thing, opposite side, if we're able. Feeling that stretch, if we're able. Two more breaths. <sighs> Exhale back, down dog. <sighs> Gazing at that feet, flowing down to our dolphin. Remembering that if down dog is, makes us tired, we can always flow into that dolphin pose. Hanging out here in dolphin, three breaths, maybe walking our feet closer towards our bodies. Coming up on our tippy toes and our dolphin, if that feels good for us. Once again, this pose prepares us for headstand. Coming back up to our down dog. Nice deep breath, inhale. Exhale, bringing that right foot forward, coming into our pigeon. Hanging out here in our pigeon pose. Oh. Relaxing the body. Nice natural breaths. As we pop down, flowing into our sleeping pigeon. Simply using this pose to relax and soothe. Maybe we can close our eyes or gaze downward, allowing our bodies to completely relax. We're going to hang out here for four more breaths. One 
a breath. Pushing our bodies up out of that sweeping pigeon. Using our hands to push our bodies up, filling that back bend. We've been doing back bends all night. So hopefully our back is nice and relaxed. If not, we're not gonna stretch or overextend our bodies today. So simply noticing how this feels as we push our bodies up from that position. Our chest comes up, our chin comes slightly up as we push our bodies up with our hands. Simply being aware and noticing. If this feels good for us, we're going to lift our left leg up and connect our left hand to our left foot. Prepping for our king pigeon or mermaid. But this is a prep for both poses. Using our hand to bring our bodies, our legs towards our buttocks as much as we comfortably can. Because we bring our, we use our hand to push our feet closer towards our buttocks. This is what prepares us for that pigeon. We're gonna hang out here for a couple breaths. Relax in the body. Maybe we notice when we relax and take deep breaths, our bodies allow us to get deeper into a pose. A lot of times it is tension that stops us from going deeper into poses. Here for us. Relax the body. Relax the leg down. Keeping it straight behind us as we bring up both our palms forward, kind of like shaping out that front leg. And we're going to gaze over that right shoulder, feeling that spinal twist here. Relaxing our bodies as we gaze over that shoulder. Coming back to center, reaching down, grabbing our straps. And if we choose, we can actually connect our strap to our left foot, hooking our foot inside of our strap. And we're gonna work on our mermaid from the side. Once we have our strap wrapped around our foot, we're going to take our hand and slightly reach it over our head and we'll notice that when we're in a mermaid, the difference between a mermaid and the king pigeon is king pigeon is more towards the back. Notice the mermaid is more offward, off towards the side. We're gonna use our hands to slightly bring our bodies here. Noticing how we feel, we don't wanna overstretch the pose. Simply hanging out, and these are nice preps that we can do for our bodies to prepare our bodies for the meat. But as you see, it feels like we are in a pose because we can still connect our fingertips together like they do a mermaid. See that there? So we can still interlace our fingertips together, just like we are in our mermaid because we are. Except our our foot isn't inside of our elbow because, as you know, our body is supposed to come even more back, more deeper but we don't want to hurt ourselves today. So we're going to keep our backs in a comfortable position and interlace our fingers. We're going to hold this for four more breaths. Relaxing the body. Relaxing the legs straight out in front of us or straight out behind us. Nice natural breaths. Coming forward, coming back into that sleeping pigeon. Relax in the body. We're gonna hang out here for four breaths. One more breath. As we slowly awaken that pigeon. With our straps still wrapped around our foot, we're gonna flow into a king pigeon, which is very similar to the mermaid, except in king pigeon, our leg is an off toward the side. Lifting our foot up, connecting our hands over our heads with our strap, 
and we're going to use the strap to bring our feet slightly towards our bodies. Our chest comes slightly up. Our chin comes slightly up as we gaze towards the heavens. And our head, our head kind of falls towards the back, kind of how we did when we was in our camel pose. Our head is relaxed between our shoulder blades. We're gonna hang out here for four breaths. Two more breaths. Exhale, relax in the body. Placing the strap off to the side. Relaxing that foot in front of us. We're gonna gaze over that opposite shoulder, the right shoulder here, spilling that spinal twist. Two more breaths. As we untuck that back foot, coming down to our down dog, relax in the body here. Maybe we can pedal our feet, walking our dog, noticing how it relaxes our hip. Nice, slow movements here as we walk our dog. Exhale to up dog, noticing how this feels in our hips. Up dog, gazing up towards the ceiling, dropping down to our cobra. Exhale. Wide-legged child's pose. Relax in the body. We're gonna hang out here in our child's pose, four breaths. Exhale into our table. As we do a couple spinal waves first before we get to our table, relax in the spinal cord here. Mm -hmm. And we are back in our table, flow into our down dog. Lifting our left leg in the air, three-legged dog, opposite side. Gazing back at that foot. Bringing our left foot forward, pigeon pose. Right leg goes towards the back. Relax in the body. Chest comes slightly up as we flow down to our sleeping pigeon. Nice natural breaths, relax in the body. Crushing our bodies up, slowly awakening that pigeon. Connecting our right hand towards our right foot by lifting our right foot up, placing it inside of our hand. We're gonna come into a mermaid by allowing our right leg to come slightly off towards the side. And if we're able, maybe we could try to connect our hand to our elbows or our wrist, whatever feels good for us. Simply noticing how this feels. Three breaths. One breath. And exhale that foot down. Relax in the body. Slightly gazing over our left shoulder, feeling that spinal twist as we use this pose to relax our spinal cord. Exhale back to center as we grab our strap and hook our strap around our foot. Noticing how when we hook our strap around our foot, it allows us to not overstretch our bodies. So now if we wanted to go into that mermaid off to the side, we can simply use the strap. Even though our foot isn't connected to our elbow, we still feel like it and we can bring our fingers towards the side and interlace our fingers together, just like we're in that mermaid. So we are actually in the mermaid without overstretching our bodies. 
Yes, I'm so sorry. If we are in our pigeon pose, yes, relax in our bodies here in our pigeon. Slightly coming out of that pigeon. <sighs> Relax in our bodies. And we're gonna try to do the king pigeon on the opposite, on the same side. Wrapping that strap back around our foot. But unlike the um, mermaid, we're not gonna have our leg off to the side. We're gonna bring it more behind our bodies. And using, I'm gonna come to the side. And using our hands to come up above our heads. And we're gonna grab the strap from above our heads with our feet is more to the backs of our body, more aligned with our spinal. We're gonna gaze our head up towards our hands. And now we are in our king pigeon pose without overstretching our bodies. Gazing up towards the heavens. We're gonna hang out here five natural breaths. Two more breaths. <sighs> Coming out of the pose whenever we need to. Relaxing our legs straight towards the back as we gaze over that left shoulder. Relaxing the body. We're going to bring this foot forward. Just wrap it right around towards the front as we find our bodies in our butterfly or our diamond position. Hmm. Noticing how this pose opens up our hips even more as we connect down to our ankles. We're gonna do a couple of cat cow rotations in our seated pose. Lifting our heart chest chakra upwards towards, and then coming back down. Chin comes towards our clavicle. And we're gonna do a couple of cat cow rotations to our natural breath. <sighs> Noticing how this feels in our body. As we find our pause, relaxing the body. Allowing our left hand to connect to our left foot. Bringing our left foot out towards the side. Feeling a stretch here in our hamstring. This pose helps relax our bodies. If this feels good, we can Slightly bring that foot in, if we choose, and connect our now right foot to our right hand and allow both feet to come out towards the side. Yes. Out to the side, our legs are shaped like a V, and we probably feel the nice deep stretch here in our inner thighs. Maybe we can allow our legs to fall deeper towards the side in that V, and maybe we'll stumble from side to side and maybe even fall over and that's where the fun is at it's just falling and learning we're gonna hang out here four more breaths two more breaths exhaling back down to our butterfly relaxing our bodies as we come onto our backs bringing our knees to our chest Knees are up in the air, feet are flat on the floor. Our hands are flat on the floor as we push our bodies up. Working on our bridge pose here. We are working our gluteus maximus. We had our abdominal muscles tight throughout the entire class. So now we're just gonna give a little love to our gluteus maximus. We are working on our buns of steel here. Maybe we can do a couple of pauses by slightly coming down and coming back up. If you choose, or we can just stay high in the air. What we are doing is we are tightening and rounding our gluteus maximus. We can go deeper by connecting our hands underneath our buttocks 
interlacing our hands underneath our backs and walking our spinal, walking our shoulder blades closer towards our spinal cord, noticing how our chest and our hips come higher in the air. Now we can really feel this burn here in our gluteus maximus. Grounding our butt here. Four more breaths. Exhaling our bodies down, relaxing. Untucking our shoulders if they were tucked. Bringing our knees in towards our chest. Relaxing the body. Crossing our feet at our ankles as we feel the tummy crunch coming slightly back up. We are slightly up here. Working our abdominal muscles. We're gonna come into our boat pose. Lifting our feet parallel with our hands. Now we just worked our buttocks. Now we're working our abdominal muscles here. We can come into a high boat or a lower boat, or we can keep our feet crossed. Whatever feels good for us. Noticing how we are balancing our bodies, and then we are working our abdominal muscles. We're going to hang out here. Six breaths. We're almost there. Nice tall boat pose, I see ya. Yes. <laughs> okay, two more breaths. Maybe bending our knees, because we're gonna do a couple of side planks right here. Because we're working our abdominals, we can work our side planks by bringing our hands from each side, side to side. Noticing how we feel. This pose makes our waistline a little bit smaller. Four more breaths. Feeling a burn. Two more breaths. <sighs> Bonus. Three more breaths. Maybe go a little bit more faster. Feeling that burn if we can. Yes. Woo. Nice tight abs. <sighs> Two more breaths. Bonus points here. Oh, finding our paws, keeping our feet in the air, connecting our hands towards our feet, lifting our left leg, then our right leg, coming back into that boat pose variation or bear pose. Yes, feeling the stretch, noticing how this pose relaxes our bodies. Nice natural breaths. Three more breaths, almost there. One more breath. Exhale, coming back to our diamond or our butterfly. Notice in our diamond pose, our feet are closer towards our bodies and our butterfly. What in our sorry, in our butterfly, our feet are closer towards our body and our diamond, our feet are further away. Whatever feels good for you, we're gonna hang out in our diamond or our butterfly and we're gonna lean forward, opening up our hip muscles even more. Just gazing and leaning forward. Natural breath, noticing how this is a hip opener. Two more breaths. As we use our hands to push our bodies back up to our diamond or butterfly, using our hands to bring our legs together, coming to our backs, bringing our knees towards our chest. Exhaling our knees towards the left, spinal twist. Oh, relaxing that spinal cord. Our shoulder back blades fall back in towards the mat. Right arm goes out to the side as we gaze over that right arm or gaze up towards the ceiling. We're going to feel this stretch hanging out here for breaths. Our eyes are closed. Shoulders are relaxing to the spinal. I'm sorry, shoulders are relaxing to the yoga mat. Two more breaths. Exhale back to center, knees to chest, hug them in. As our knees fall to the opposite side, 
opposite arm goes out as we gaze over the opposite arm or gaze up towards the heavens. Eyes are closed. Two more breaths. Exhale, back to center, knees to chest. Legs come up in the air, legs on the wall. Arms come up between our legs, coming down to our happy baby. Our feet, our hands connect. We're gonna hang out here three breaths. Maybe rocking side to side if that feels good for you. Maybe cracking our toe knuckles, whatever feels good. Nice deep breath, exhale, legs in the air, legs on the wall pose. As we relax our legs downward into our savasana, our legs are parallel side by side. The heels of our feet are connecting. As we allow our feet to fall towards the side like a V, completely relaxing our legs. Our shoulder blades fall backwards into the yoga mat. Eyes are closed. As we take nice natural breaths. Using this time to relax and soothe. May we relax in silent meditation for eight natural breaths. Nice deep breath in. Exhale as we roll onto our side into a fetal pose. Continuing to gaze our eyes downward or closing our eyes. We're gonna hang out here for four more breaths. As we slowly wiggle our toes, our ankles, maybe rotating our hips, using the movements to awaken our body, taking our hand and using that to push our bodies up as we slowly open our eyes, finding ourselves in a seated pose that feels good for us. Nice deep breath. Exhale, palms above the head. Breathing to our salute. I'm sorry, seated prayer. Gazing downward towards the earth. As we thank ourselves for allowing ourselves 
to practice self-care here today. For in a busy, busy world, it is a beautiful thing to make time for self. And I thank you so much for allowing me to guide and practice with you here today. Peace and blessings be to you. Namaste. Here are a few prep poses to open up the shoulders a little bit more. Yeah. So this pose here is actually opening up your arms. See that there? Because can you see how my hands are behind my back? Yes. So we'll see how it's like behind your back. But before we get into that pose, there are prep poses for that as well. Okay. Taking your hand, bringing it behind your back. Your fingertips are kind of like near your near your finger blades. See okay. that there? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna take this opposite hand and push. See that there? Yes. See that? Mm -hmm. so in a sense, you are kind of like how you are in that king pigeon, right? But this is a cow face. And what you're doing is you're using this hand to push this shoulder back more deeper. Your chest comes up. Your chin comes slightly up as you lift, pushing. But you don't want to over push and cause any injury. So slight, soft pushing on that elbow, which will allow your hand eventually to go from here to there. See that there? Yeah. It goes further and further behind your back. So that is a nice pose to do. And of course, what you do to one side, you must do to the opposite. So switching, this hand goes behind your back, taking this hand and pushing it back. Get it there? And that will eventually open up your shoulders even more. And that will allow you to get into a full, because this can be a cow face when a person cannot grasp their fingers behind their back. We can also do this. But these are nice prep poses to eventually, eventually get our bodies to get inside of that complete cow face. But this, this pose, this prep also works for king pigeon and mermaid because as you can see, when we're in our king pigeon and mermaid, we are doing these, we are, we are doing this pose. So that is a nice prep. And it's like a Sage Marici pose where your staff pose, we're in our staff, we lift up one leg, Lift up their arm, see that? Just wrap their arm around their shoulder. Hand is here, opposite hand, comes around and grabs the hands together. So it's stretching the body, but it's also opening up the shoulder. And then you'll find that your alignment will just become so much more balanced, yes. So this is a Sage Marici. We didn't have a chance to work on that today, but I was. There's actually a whole lot of poses that I had planned for y'all today, but the hour and 15 minutes goes by so fast. One more Sage Marici prep. Here we go. Then there was a prep that we could just do this. See that there? Because everyone can't get into the Sage Marici, right? Or not yet. But there's always a prep pose. Crossing this foot over that leg, crossing this hand over that knee. This hand goes behind the body and you gaze over. See that? You so that's the nice Sage Marici prep. But those are poses that we didn't have time to get to today because when we have fun, time goes by so fast. Yeah. <laughs>